I've decided to take on my biggest challenge ever. In the month of November, I'm going to try to do $20 million in sales and vlog every single day. This is the final vlog. Hello. Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? How are you? a gift from Shark Tank actually. A toast. Cheers. Cheers lads. Cheers. A birthday vlog that I have no reason why we're doing it. We said we'd film every day so we'll do it. My phone started jumping what a day. Swear to God I need it now I can't afford it. This is going to be slowly me deteriorating <laughs> throughout the day. Wait. Told him this would happen and we not a minute late. Seen him down bad now they trying to hate. Same one trying to hit me for the race. Got a man now they coming with a place. Check the numbers. Cause now I cannot Woo! Now I can afford my own house. Davey, Shark, do you do? On the low, like I'm pushing another pace. Told him come down and I'll meet him at a gate. Alrighty, so it's been an insane month so far. Usually I don't have holidays in this month, but very long overdue to get to Italy. I had to cancel my trip last year because of um, some issues that came up in the business. So. I don't have Charlie with me, I've got my girlfriend, so if the footage is awesome, that's because of her. Uh, but no, we're going, flying over to Rome now, which will be good, going to Doha, and then straight over to Rome, which should be chilled. We're not going to be to doing too much traveling, might go to the Dolomites and ski a little bit. Still be working over there, so I'll keep the vlogs going. Love Rome, how to think like a Roman Empire, one of my favorite books, Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, another one of my favorite books. So be doing some history but I'm not gonna turn this into a travel vlog I'm still gonna be doing some work so we'll see you in a bit all right morning one in Italy and it's Black Friday the best day of the year the Christmas for every single e-commerce entrepreneur. Um, it's 3 a.m. in the morning because I did not handle the jet lag too well. I've been up since 1.30, so I'm gonna smash a workout. And then I've got some very, very exciting updates. Since we last had an update, everything has been going very, very well. I'll update you on results and then let you know what we're gonna do today. Hey, 21 cows, not too bad. It's supposed to be winter over here, but I'm literally dripping in sweat. People ask, do I train on holiday? Obviously, yes. But honestly, with these vlogs, past two weeks and Black Friday, barely trained. So um, I'm gonna be doing kind of a, a pretty, pretty, pretty tough workout. Every single day, 800 cows plus, plus weight. Um, I'll also be riding a fair bit and reading a fair bit as well. People that, you know, go on holiday, and then they're just like, oh, I need a break. But at the same time, when they're at home, they also don't work out and try hard. Makes no sense. So look, if I needed a break from my training because I trained lots before I came over, then I would do that, but I didn't. So I'm gonna use this time and this time off to actually get into it. This hotel is pretty sweet. I have no idea how they found out that I was Udi. So I kind of wish I brought Charlie, my videographer, because now I'm walking around the most stoic city on earth, the, the inventors of stoicism with a fucking selfie stick. This is my new Charlie, my new videographer, it's there. But anyway, so promised an update. So about two years ago, when we are gearing up for Black Friday, I was like, yeah, awesome. We're gonna be doing $20 million. It's gonna be a game changer. And then in October, we completely sold out. Our whole, all of our customers were leaving us negative reviews because we didn't even know we were sold out. Um, a container was shipped over to Russia and we never saw it again. Uh, there was just chaos. You know, we were getting scammed by our suppliers, scammed by some of our team members as well and, and consultants. And this kind of brings me to my first lesson about what I wanted to talk to, to you about today which is if you ever have a major problem in your business, it's probably a people problem. And the whole reason why 
you know, we have just surpassed our target, which I'll get into in a second, it's very exciting, is because the people in Udi are the best people on earth in e-commerce. And I'm not saying that lightly. You know, a lot of founders, what they'll say is they'll talk about their team being amazing because they want to look less selfless and it makes them look better by pushing praise to these people. But I am genuinely saying that right now that the team, sorry, I almost just got hit by car. Uh, there was a crossing. Sorry, but it was a crossing. He was, wasn't going to hit me. <laughs> this could be the world's worst vlog that you guys have ever had. But I am saying this with 100% authenticity and you guys have seen me over this past month and how little I have had to do for Udi because the team there are so fucking amazing and they are top tier in e-commerce. Our performance team, our CEO, Belinda Barlow, like just everyone has just lifted and everyone is extremely autonomous and just give, it really do, does like display the give a shit value that we value so much. So that is the main thing. If you've got an issue, it's probably a people issue first. Fix the people, then the processes will come after that. In terms of sales, over the past kind of four days since our last update, we did 4.2 million. We've actually pulled back on um, certain things just because we we're gonna run out of stock. And now we're projecting $38 million for the month, which is just considering we we're worried of uh, even making 20 million, the whole team has just made that happen. I feel like the biggest tourist ever. <laughs> things look insane. Your second workout. So the other thing is social growth. About two weeks ago, I uh, did a video saying my vlogs failed and I could not get social growth. And it was an interesting thing because it was kind of like, obviously we're being quite public about it. When you come down to a situation like that, you kind of have two options. You can give up or you can change strategy and persevere and what we did was we sat down we restructured the processes i realigned the team i self-improved in my ability to tell stories and things started to take off and finally we've got exponential growth now for those that don't know exponential curves are the greatest curves of all time um, and our instagram is going through that at the moment we're going from 200 followers a day to a thousand followers a day and YouTube's growing really quickly as well. So if in terms of, you know, the lessons that are still from that is honestly just, you can have anything you want in this world, but you can't have everything you want in this world. Pick your priorities, pick your battles and never give up. So look, we'll be able to continue that now with less involvement from me because now the team's all structured right, the processes are there. All I need to do is this kind of stuff and riff on things that I love and yeah, should scale nicely and keep going. I can guarantee you if you launched these in Australia, these olive oil bottles, it would scale like crazy. <laughs> That's how all feelings should be. Mm, wow. Not carnival though. Cannoli. Good morning, everybody. It is what time is it? 4 a.m. today, which is good. I still got up at 1 a.m. Jet lag's a bitch. Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday, so Georgina has food poisoning, so she was sick all day. But um, I still had a, a reasonably good day. I just walked around Rome and, and chilled. So yeah, new hotel now. This one is. Um, stunning uh, i think it's like 1500 euros a night i'm not actually 100 percent sure but very 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 beautiful in terms of today i gotta buy some clothes because i packed one pair of pants and i've just been getting them washed over and over um georgina took all my stuff all, all my suitcase room so and then yeah i think this is going to be the last ever vlog um well at least for this year i would say i'll have a think about it it's uh, i'm kind of torn I think that it's a lot of work, but at the same time, it's 
been really powerful. You know, I had a, a person message me yesterday, an agency owner. He was just like, I'm just completely burnt out. And I wanted to give up and then I started watching your vlogs every morning and they were just so motivational. And, you know, that's my purpose. It's, I, I love that shit. So I'm kind of tempted to, to keep going because of that. Um, you know, it's similar to my assistant. She's worked on, with me for a lot of projects. And she says that Daily Mentor is the single best project that she likes working on simply because we get messages from people that were like, I was gonna go out of business. It was brutal. With someone last year and I gave him some good advice in an hour. There's only so much you can do in an hour, right? I, I just thought his product is just fatigued and he was just done. His business was done. But after joining two months ago or a month ago or something like that, his, he, we've doubled his business again. And he's just so grateful. And it's, it's definitely reframed my thinking around information products. There's a lot of grifters in the space and there's a lot of shady practices. At the same time, I've got a feeling that I'm gonna be more proud of Daily Mentor than the Udi, which is an interesting thought. Look how beautiful this design is. So usually the product goes, these twisting ones, they have the mechanism out here. I've got them at home. This goes in increments of ones and sorry, twos, which is super easy to use. And it also grabs the weights from the inside out, which is pretty insanely good. It reminds me of a famous Steve Jobs quote, which says a microwave only needs plus 30 seconds on it. And that is the way that you can make a microwave looking incredibly sleek and beautiful. It's interesting that people think that creating products is all about complication it's actually harder to strip away than it is to create new features stripping away is reducing expenses adding features is adding expenses and you can just always throw more money at it i think toby lukey said that in a recent podcast i was listening to and i thought that was really really interesting so as a mental exercise just look at a product an everyday household item and say how could i actually reduce this in a certain way and make it simpler, maintaining the amount of user experience, ma maintaining the positive user experience. I've been eating pasta over here and cannolis, the carnivore diet has well and truly gone out the window. My energy is terrible. I got anxious yesterday for the first time in a long time. It's very hard to, to get off that diet. It's hard to communicate how good it actually makes you feel. But fuck me, carbonara is tasty. It's almost worth it. I actually realized the other day that my favorite podcast was actually making me stupid. And it's not because they are stupid, the guests, but it's simply because I realized that my information diet, all of the information that I consume that shapes the paradigm of how I see reality was coming from two people and that is just such a bad way to go because all of their biases will become your biases. And we need to make sure that we are constantly consuming the right information based on our goals. And that goal doesn't always need to be, I want to make tons of money. Sometimes also the most entertaining podcasts, they're talking about new businesses, exciting businesses. That is like mental masturbation because you're getting this little dopamine here of just being like, I could run that business, I could launch that business, which is the complete opposite to probably what you need to be doing, which is focusing on your existing startup or something like that. So I realize you know, that they're obviously incredibly smart and I definitely still listen to them. I think they're probably the best podcast. It's just like fitness. Like if you enjoy the fitness activity that you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's walking, boxing, whatever, like going to the gym with a friend. If you enjoy it, you will do it more often. And that's similar with information as well. But if you enjoy it so much over everything else, every single bit of your spare time will be done using what, listening to that information. So I've just started finding my favorite uh, new books that I've read, searching the author's name into Spotify and then listening to them um, instead. I've also been watching, like if you go onto YouTube and you write, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, old speech and this kind of stuff, you actually see, and you know, there's just so many people like uh, Sergey Brin, all of those kind of people that started Google 
some of those old lectures that they've got is just fascinating as well. Just trying to get understand their paradigms, how they see the world in the early stage, which allowed them to achieve greatness. So, yeah, I think information diets is going to become one of the biggest trends over the next few years. People are going to start to become cognizant of things that they're consuming on a daily basis. And Instagram is obviously the single worst thing for that, simply because it's just this insecurity engine that constantly tells you that don't have enough and serves you that. But I think at the same time, you know, even traditional media outlets that are constantly pushing one narrative will really start to be disrupted, not by, and it's always been like this, but I think it's becoming more mainstream. You know, people are just becoming more aware of the issues um, that a lot of that stuff faces. So more independent publications will start coming out, more ways to compare this information will start coming out. If you wanted to start tailoring and creating a product around information diets and how to serve people a set amount of information could be really interesting or even allow them to track what information and what they've learned, um, as well as also look at biases, could be, could be really interesting. So when I first bought my house down the beach, I was really kind of, it was a weird feeling because it was like the one thing that I wanted. It was so strange because when I got it, I was just like, I don't really feel like happy. I feel scared. And it was only until I learned about philosophy and the Stoics that I realized it was because of that attachment was creating fear. And since then I've been obsessed with reading about Seneca, about Marcus Aurelius. It's funny, before I even knew about the, that Roman Empire trend, I was reading a book and my girlfriend said, well, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? And I like lifted up the book and it was how to think like a Roman Empire, emperor. And it talks mainly about uh, Marcus Aurelius, you know, some of his quotes like, waste no time arguing what a good man is, just be one. Like. It, all of those, all of that has just been so powerful for my life. Even Steve Jobs famously said, I would trade everything in the world for an evening with Socrates. And I think one of the most interesting things as well is the father of Stoicism, so Zeno, he was famously shipping purple dye, so they, uh, the royals used to use purple dye and it was really hard to get because you'd need to get sea snails and you'd dry them out. Apparently it was worth more than silver. And that was his trade and his whole ship sunk. And this, was, this wasn't in, uh, he wasn't Roman, he was Greek. And he realized it was just obviously devastating for him. And he realized that he, he went back to Athens and started seeking new things and learned the ways of the cynics and eventually launched like the a school of Stoicism. And from there it was kind of born and he, he looks back and he famously says that he found so much fortune on that shipwreck. But anyway, guy, why do guys think about the Roman Empire? I think it's mainly because, I think it's let, not a male thing, I think it's a entrepreneur thing. I think it's a, a being, about, being about virtue and wisdom and perseverance and not getting phased by bad events. Um, that's all entrepreneurship is, so that's why I'm so attracted to it. Pretty crazy that Marcus Aurelius just wasn't really even writing meditations, one of the most famous books, for to be read. It was kind of like his diary. And then his son was apparently one of the most pompous, uh, self-righteous, entitled person. Like he would fight in the Colosseum and not be allowed to be harmed as well. So he fought like 750 times. And they ended up killing him, taking all of his names off all of the buildings and dragging him through the street as well. So it's kind of like someone that believes that they're self-important versus someone that doesn't. And then, you know, Marcus Aurelius is known as like the last of the five good emperors. So I feel like this is the perfect place to sign off. To finish the vlogs, we're in the Dolomites. I'm in a lodge called Forestus or something like that. And it is very beautiful, but look, just wanted to say massive thank you to, to all the, everyone that watched. 
everyone that just put it on in the background and worked. Um, I think it was really successful. I think we inspired lots of people. That's the end goal. It's not about views. It's not about any of that. But yeah, I feel like uh, we'll still be posting two, three times a week, uh, probably when I get back in the country. But yeah, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you all. Keep chasing your dreams and yeah, enjoy e-commerce. See ya.